Mutual aid. You never know when you'll need a good plan. What will happen if your community suffers an event like what happened in Minneapolis on August 1st, 2007? How many times have you heard the phrase, all events are local, they start locally, and they end locally? While this is true, what happens when an emergency situation exceeds the capabilities and resources of a local community? Does your locality, your county, your region, or your state have the ability to identify and move the most appropriate and closest resources in a timely manner that are needed to satisfy the demands of the emergency. Many factors can affect the need and use of mutual aid. Local communities must examine their geography, demography, special hazards, threat and risk assessments, and inherent capabilities. One look at FEMA's webpage and you can see a rise in the number of federally declared disasters every year. Disasters are occurring more frequently, and we all need to be prepared. In 2006, a cooperative agreement was developed between the IAFC and the Department of Homeland Security's National Integration Center, NIC, to develop formal mutual aid agreements in all 50 states, U.S. tribal nations, and U.S. territories. IAFC provides a technical advisor and administrative support throughout the planning and preparedness cycle. Many states have seized this opportunity and have worked tirelessly to complete the process. The following are stories from Texas and Wisconsin that demonstrate how the process has improved their response capabilities. Approximately 10 o'clock p.m. on July 5th, 2009, the Cudahy Fire Department responded to the report of smoke showing in the Patrick Cudahy Meatpacking Facility. The building itself took up an area of approximately 10 city blocks so you can get an idea of the size and magnitude of this fire. Picture of three football fields side by side, four to five stories in height, about 280,000 square feet burned. The fire in the end was reported to be the largest single structure fire in the state of Wisconsin. We in Wisconsin here uh, experience a, a major fire in the uh, city of Cudahy. That's a suburb of Milwaukee County. And the approval from the state fire chiefs was not more than two weeks earlier than the date of that fire. And as a result, the key people were in place and we were able to, without a field operations guide, we had the right people in the right place at the right time and it worked beautifully. Well, before, like most fire departments, we would rely on mutual aid, we'd call our neighboring communities and that works out great for regular incidents. The magnitude of this incident was just so big, we needed so many resources that we had to move further out from our regular mutual aid partners, and the system allowed us to do that. While we had this huge event going on, there were other regular calls still coming in. The system allowed us to backfill the stations so that we could take care of those calls as well. After Hurricane Katrina, Rita, we realized in Texas that we were not able to efficiently move resources, fire resources, even within our state. And it really took a disaster like Hurricane Katrina to show everybody that we needed this. We had a lot of local and regional agreements in place around the state. It was when we expanded beyond that or we exhausted those resources, there was no mechanism in place so prior to that, it really came out of the state. They may send out a uh, email or a TLETS message that there's a, a major incident going and they need resources and if you can provide that, go. Well, the, the, as we all know in the fire service, the problem with that is accountability, reimbursement issues, credentialing issues, uh, safety of the equipment, is it the right type of equipment, all those things come into play if it's not an organized systematic response and it certainly wasn't prior to this system. 
So during Ike, we actually had the system activated for around six weeks, providing resources to the Gulf Coast. The immediate response was for search and rescue and evac needs and pushing uh, water and ice and, and food into the affected region. And then after the reentry, then it became a process of where we were providing emergency services to those areas. So we pulled resources out of nine of our regions, representing about 88 fire departments and close to 600 firefighters. So the system worked extremely well. Everybody was uh, accounted for throughout the operation. Everybody came home safe. Everybody got reimbursement through the state of Texas. So it did exactly what we needed it to do. When the request came, we were able to meet the mission that was identified. Whether your plan has been in effect for three days or three years, the key is having a plan educating the responders, and then following the plan. In both cases, the departments involved did just that. In parallel with the IMIS program, there's a national effort to help link the individual state systems in order to expand mutual aid among contiguous state, local, and tribal entities. The Emergency Management Committee of the IAFC was formed in 2006 and is very active today. They've published two courses and continue to work on major issues such as credentialing, resource typing, and reimbursement. They also sponsor the GO teams, which respond to assist local, state, and federal disaster authorities. There are over 100 IAFC members involved in the EMC and the six subcommittees. So you ask, why is this information important to me? The reason is clear. While all departments may not be in a position to give assistance, Everyone, at some point, may be in a position to request assistance. Each and every responder, from chief to firefighter, needs to understand how the process works locally as well as how it works within your state. The ultimate goal is for every community to have an emergency response plan that incorporates all hazards and all disciplines. An efficient and effective response must include resources from fire, law enforcement, EMS, public works, emergency management, and other public and private sector resources that are part of the response and recovery phases of a disaster. Planning and preparedness are the keys to success. We encourage you to spend some time in your home agency and evaluate your mutual aid process. Training and drills will be the foundation for success when an event occurs and additional resources are needed. For more information, visit www.iafc.org mutual aid. Thank you.